Basically, I completed two master theses while working at first part-time and later full-time as an engineer. I'm not making this video to brag. Okay, a little bit. What else am I supposed to do with two master's degrees? Use them for my work. I would not recommend doing what I did to anyone. I'm serious, don't do it. But since you're gonna do it anyway, if you're anything like myself, then I might as well help you do it in the least harmful way possible. Hey and welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I'm a German mechanical engineer based in Sweden. So today I'm going to tell you how I completed two master theses within less than one year while also working as an engineer. And if you don't know what a master thesis is, it's basically what we call the final degree project, which you do towards the end of your master studies. And it usually consists of doing research to answer a specific research question and then writing a really long paper about it. In my case, about 60 pages for one of them and 30 pages for the other one. So to give you a little bit of background, I was a student at a German university and following a master's program in mechanical engineering. And I was studying abroad in Sweden for one year. Although I was really passionate about engineering, I had also been very interested in business studies and entrepreneurship for a while. So I decided to use all of my free elective courses to take as many courses in that field as I could. And after about half a year, I realized that all the business courses I had taken were actually part of a master's program at my Swedish university. That master was called Entrepreneurship and Innovation Management and I had accidentally done almost half of the credits necessary to get that degree. So I decided to just apply for that master's program and see if I could get in, since I thought it would be great to prove all these skills I've been learning with a degree. And so until the end of my year abroad, I took even more courses from that master, along with, of course, my engineering courses. Since I wanted to stay a little bit longer in Sweden, I also applied for an internship at a battery startup here in Stockholm to gain some work experience over the summer. And then a few things happened. First of all, COVID became a thing. So my university went into lockdown and all of my courses were moved online. I also started my internship, which was online during the first few weeks. And then I realized that I could actually finish all of the remaining courses from my German university without ever going back since that university was also teaching online. And since everything was online and I wasn't doing that many courses, it was actually quite manageable to take courses at two universities while working 40 hours a week at my internship. And as it turned out, I really liked working at that company. I really supported their mission to produce greener batteries. And I also had been given a really exciting project to work on by myself. So naturally I want to keep working there. The only problem was that I still needed to do my master thesis for my German university. And then I also found out that I had gotten into the business master's program at the Swedish university. And since I only needed one more course and the master's thesis to complete it, it felt stupid not to do it. One thing I should probably mention is that university is basically free in Germany and in Sweden, which means that paying tuition was not a factor in my decision and I could just decide to study a little bit more. So anyway, here I was needing to complete two master theses within the next year, plus one more university course, plus I wanted to work at the battery startup. So here's how I made that work. First of all, I sat down and made a really good elaborate plan for the whole year. This plan included when my course was happening at the university and when the different assignments were due. Then I planned in from when to when I was going to work on the first thesis and from when to when on the second thesis. And in the original plan there was basically no overlap. And then I decided that during the first thesis I could only work half time and that during the second thesis I could start working full time. That was the plan anyway. And yeah, maybe not everything happened exactly according to that plan. But I think if I had no plan, then this would have been impossible. Second of all, I used brutal prioritization. So I made a strict list of priorities. Priority number one was my engineering master's thesis, since I figured I really need to get this degree so that I can find an engineering job later. My second priority was my job since this would of course be a potential place to work at after my thesis and since this was how I was earning money. And in third place was my business master thesis and coursework since this was something I was just doing out of interest and not really because I needed the degree to work. And so every time I had an overlap of responsibilities, I first did everything I needed to do for my engineering thesis, then for work and then everything else. The third strategy I used was strict designated time windows to work on each of the tasks. I was working two and a half days a week, so I blocked every other time in my work calendar. And I also communicated to my entire team 
during which days and hours I would be available. And this was quite hard to do because I was super new to the team and less experienced than most people on the team. So I was feeling a little bit of hesitation to be this strict about it, but this was absolutely necessary. And I think it also gave me some respect since this way they knew exactly when they could get my response. And they also realized that I'm taking my thesis really serious, so they need to as well. No one's going to respect my boundaries more than I do. Then the fourth strategy I used is optimizing absolutely anything that I could think of, which means I was meal prepping once a week for the entire week. I was buying groceries once a week and buying the exact same thing every week, cooking the exact same thing every week. And I actually don't mind this, but I know it's not for everyone. Then I was working from home as many days as I could so that I could save the commuting time. I also switched from going to the gym to running and doing workouts in the park because I felt that running helped me clear my head a lot more and helped me get the benefits of a workout a lot quicker. And it also saves the time of going to the gym and back. So that's everything I can think of right now. The fifth thing I did was working every single evening and weekend and pulling quite late shifts, which is obviously not very fun and I hate to say it, but there was just no way I would fit all of these tasks into working just five days a week, eight hours a day. So yeah, I worked a lot. It was not sustainable. It was very stressful. And the only way that I got through it was with the sixth point. And that was a shitload of goal setting and visualization and self-motivation. So I basically plastered my walls with what I wanted to achieve with every single one of the projects I was doing and my timeline and my most important tasks and the list of priorities I had set myself. I also wrote a list of everything I was going to do once I was done with all of this and would have more time. One of the things was actually starting a YouTube channel. Yeah, and just having all of this sitting there knowing why I was doing this, why I wanted to finish soon so that I could move on to other fun projects. Still didn't really help, but maybe a little bit. <laughs> okay, so this is how I did it. Now, were there any upsides to doing this whole thing? Yeah, kinda. So I did get through my final year of studies in the time I had set out, and I was already getting working experience and earning money. And one thing I found really interesting was that I was procrastinating a lot less because I had so many things to do and therefore didn't really have time to think about how to get started or what to do next. I would just have to kind of keep going. It also made me a lot better at setting strict boundaries for my work and got me into the habit, for example, of turning off my phone when I'm not working. I also got quite good at writing since I was writing a lot every single day. And I also got more confident in the fact that there actually is time for something if it's really important to you. Otherwise, I probably would also not have believed that working full time and making a video every week would be possible. But for now, it's working quite well. And I feel like this experience really gave me the confidence to know that there actually is time for the things that really matter if you make time. And I guess I got a lot more efficient at my work since I only had more or less 20 hours a week to do it. I just had to get it done because otherwise it would take away from time for my master thesis, which was not acceptable. So I got it done. So now what were the downsides to this? Obviously a lot of stress, exhaustion. I was not sleeping well. And I think overall this was quite unnecessary to put myself through all of the stress. I feel like this is really a learning for myself to allow things to take their time and to not do so many things at the same time. I mean, now I'm glad that I did it because it means I'm done with university. I am able to work and I learned a lot of things, but if I had to go back, I would not do this again. So I hope that some of the tricks that I used can help you reduce stress in your life as well. But I genuinely hope that you will not do anything similar in stress and workload and that you will allow yourself to take the time for things that they require. If you like this video, leave me a like. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you in my next video.